for the inlay and get a design or draw a design out and put dots on it that way you can mark each spot that you want your your uh, your wire for this type of wire inlay anyway so they'll show up as dots and what you'll do is you'll get these like little little micro bits here and they come with this little hand tool right here to put them in and this is what you want to use these are like little hand uh, twist drill bits and what you do is uh, the back of it spins here so you'll put it on the hole and then make sure you try to keep this as straight as possible so it goes straight so it goes straight in and doesn't create a divot and then push in every little spot there and go all the way around now our next step we're going to take this off inspect it there we go It's looking pretty good. See it too much there. See it in the glare a little bit there. There we go. If we, there we go. So that looks good. So that'll all be brass. Now, since we have our design on there, I'm going to take the hand twist drill bit here and go around the whole thing again and make sure that each hole is deep enough for our wire. Now for the fun part. We have our design for our inlay. See it right there? It's a key. We're going to put the inlay in. So one thing I did <clears throat> is I went around with my drill bit and I went through every little hole on my design here after I was done just to make sure it was freely going in and out each time with little resistance as little resistance as possible because you want the inlay to go smoothly in the reason being is you don't want to struggle with it because you're using super glue so you want it to go smoothly in and the types of wire that I use I particularly use a lot of people use I mean it's very common to use silver I just happen to have this it's just a uh, 22 gauge wire. It doesn't need to be canthons, all that crap. That's just uh, leftover stuff I've had from something else. But 22 gauge wire. So I got 22 gauge brass wire over here as well. And I found that that works for um, that little bitty bit I have, which is like, what, uh, 0 0.45 see, millimeters? Yeah, 0 0.45 millimeters. So these fit about right in there. Another thing I've used before are little brad nails. These little, you might recognize these, these little nails. So that fit perfectly into one of the drill bit sizes. And you can also get a music wire or just buy the, you know, silver wire, or whatever kind you want, you know, on eBay or something. We're going to use brass, so we have it all here. And we're going to use the super glue. It's the same super glue I've been trying. Uh, I'm going to try for the, um, uh, I might see a glue finish this, but I'm gonna try this out. But yeah, this is plenty fine for what we're doing right here. And just before we get any further, if you found this online, this is a wire gauge to drill bit size. It's just a big converter, so if anybody needs that, there it is. Screenshot it. There you go. And I'm doing this on paper just to make sure, because we're using super glue, just to make sure that we have no mishaps here. And the way we want to do it is I hold it in a pair of pliers like this. That way it's something strong holding on to it, not my fingers where it can possibly move around and not get in there. This is strong. You don't need it to have stick out too far below the bottom either, because you don't want it to bend while you're trying to push it in. We're going to dip it in a little glue. So there we go. We're going to dip it in a little glue, and there's going to stick it right in the hole and we don't particularly need this long a wire either this is just what i had and i was just being quick about it so zoom in here so here's our glue you can pour it out on something if you need to i'm just going to there we go got some on it and now we want to start far away from everything there we go we're good. 
Actually, maybe not. I don't think we got enough glue on that. It's stuck in there. Okay. I think that'll be good. Then what we want to do is work from the farthest away up. You want it to be each time you put one in, you want to make sure the next one you want to do is reachable because it can be a pain uh, getting your fingers or pliers in here to get these holes that are so close to each other. So make sure you plan that out. So again, just another piece of wire here. onto it there. There we go. Glue. Make sure I have it this time. There we go. I can see it on there. And heck. Oh no, don't stick there. Alright, they're a little too slow with that. I'm gonna have to flip it around because that glue's probably no good now. And I bent it a little bit. I think I'm going to have to skip every other hole and then come back, trim these off, and do the holes between because they're just too close together. So here we go again. Let's try it again. Yeah, there's our super glue. And there we go. Got that in. And that's what we're going to do. We're just going to go around for each and every one of these. I'm going to get as many as I can on the first pass wait a little bit, make sure it's nice and dried. I'm gonna come back and I'm gonna clip them all off. Just normal wire clippers here. I'm gonna clip them all off and then I'm gonna do the rest of the holes. One thing to keep in mind when you're clipping it off is you see uh, when you're gripping onto it, make sure when you clamp down, it doesn't push against the wood at all so it's not accidentally pulling the wire at all whenever you clip these off. So I will be back soon after I get all these in here. Okay, we got all of our inlay in, and we filed it down quite a bit. I just used a uh, Dremel with a sand drum. This wire is really thin, so it won't heat up a whole lot, and the, the sand drum will just eat right through it. But even then, make sure you're going back and forth between each of them, because you still don't want that heat on that metal, because it'll loosen up that glue, and it just it's just not good. So you can see I got it pretty close down there. Everything's looking good. Now we need to file it down the rest of the way and sand it. So I'm going to use a just a normal, you know, flat file here. And I'm going to finish filing it the rest of the way down until it's completely smooth. We're almost there, everyone. It's time to glue it. So we have a whole bunch of different options for, you know, uh, different clamps and uh, grips to put on our picks when we're gluing it to grip it with the glue to make sure it stays nice and tight. Um, you have these types of clamps. This is my favorite right here. I got some tape on it. Um, I also have the size larger than this. That's just a little bit wider that I use most of the time. Uh, but these are typically more than enough. You got these ones. When you're using these types of things, you want to keep in mind, remember the distance between the holes. Make sure your clamp fits. See, mine does not right there. So this clamp would not work. We have smaller of these. These are all right, but they're not quite as strong. They're all right, though. We have these kinds of clamps. These work really well. These are pretty strong. Um, I like using the little ones for the tip right here. That's what I use this one for. That way I'll have a clamp there and a clamp on the tip. And then we also have a pair of these, which a lot of people use these as well, and as well as with impressioning. So, let's go ahead, move all this out of the way. I'm going to put a napkin under this just in case there's anything dripped. Put that over there. And for our epoxy choices, um, I've used this five minute, um, sets in five minutes Gorilla Glue quite a bit. And it works well. Um, Half tangs will probably be plenty fine, but I do find in full tangs, and especially when um, I made ones without picks, and then occasionally I did have some failures. So um, the thing with epoxy is the longer set time is typically a stronger bond. So I switched from this, which I use it on cheaper picks, and I'm just going to use in our two, you know, just whatever picks, to this, which is just a little bit uh, tougher of a 
of a, um, a bond. This one takes a little bit longer to, uh, to set. Yeah, 60, 80 minutes. So I've been using that and I haven't gone back since. So what we're gonna do is get our bottles here. We have our resin and our hardener. We wanna pour for this type of, this particular one here, equal amounts of each one. And we really don't need a lot because this is just a half tang. We're gluing from there to there. That's more than enough right there. Get our pins up here and ready as well. Almost forgot about those. Make sure they're nice and clean. There we go. Let's get our hardener. It's a little bit thicker, so you gotta just eyeball it and make sure you're doing equal amounts. There we go. That should be more than enough. Yeah, I think that'll be enough. I'm gonna do a little bit more drop just to make sure with the hardener. All right, and I use toothpicks to mix it up. There we go, we're ready. So what I'm gonna do now, I'm gonna discard one of these, put that up there, and grab our pick, our blade metal. Let's zoom in a little bit now. Our blade metal is already cleaned off. I gotta make sure it's nice and clean. Remember we roughed it up with that 60 grit sandpaper to see if it would stick a little bit better, you know, give a little bit more grip. So what I'm gonna do is take the epoxy, just put it on the handle here. I'm not gonna go all the way up because it'll get there on its own just fine. So I wanna be careful not to get it on the a little bit of metal that's exposed at the top there. And when we put the clamp on, the glue will expand under there and squish, so it'll fill up those gaps. Which I guess it doesn't matter because I have to clean some off with a rag anyway. So that's plenty enough right there. See, it's just plenty right there. And what you want to do is you want to make sure there's plenty inside the handle here. So I stick it through. Rotate this a little bit. You can see how it's dripping out the side there. Scoop it up. And just keep trying to stick a little bit of it through. And I'll take it from this side now. There we go. I just want to make sure that there's plenty of it in there and all the way in the back as well. There we go. I'm going to clean all the excess off again. And I'm going to put a little bit more on just to make sure. I honestly don't think we'll need it. Yeah. I'm going to go ahead and put it in. There we go. Got it in. So now we want to make sure our, our pins are in. I'm going to take those, I'm going to dip them in the epoxy. Just need a little bit on the tip. There we go. I went through. Actually, I'm going to flip this one around because I have one side that's already shined up a little bit. I like to keep that on. Both of them on the same side. There we go. And this one I have smoothed out on this side. Dip it in there. There we go. So a little bit of a pain about this part is with the pins, I almost never find I can get them perfectly aligned on the opposite side here. They almost always poke through in some way focus there. Yeah, you can see it's sticking out just a little bit right there. And you can line up, try to get it perfect, but even then you will end up wanting to file it. You, you just will. So I just try to get it as close as possible. So there's just as little as possible filing there. And just let it be. And now we want to put our clamps on. 
clip it from this end here. There we go. And you can see, I'm not sure if you can see it, but some of the epoxy is getting squished out now. Put our clamp, clamp on. So we're going to do that. And then I'm actually going to take a paper towel. I'll wipe this end off a little bit of that epoxy because I'm going to put a clamp there. You know, I'm add it to get the rest around here. And this saves time later too, cleaning that up a little bit. You want to make sure your, your cracks are filled in good. But you also just want to make sure there's no extra really if you don't really need it somewhere because you'll have to clean that all off later. That's plenty fine right there. And I'll put a clamp right there. Oh, it's slipping because it's slippery. This one to stay now, so I'm going to try this one right here that doesn't have the little rubber grips on the ends. If that one will stay, okay, I think that'll do it. Fold this in right here so it's not in the way. I'll clamp that right there. And one thing I notice is how I mentioned that the here we go. This part on the top here, how we how I said that epoxy will fill it in later because the metal doesn't go all the way through. The metal is just a little bit not quite as wide as we needed it to be. So I'm going to take a little bit of epoxy on my toothpick here and put it in that crack just to make sure that that's full. That way we don't have to make sure it's filled up later. And this is one spot where I wouldn't mind if the epoxy was sticking out a little bit just because I want to make sure that that crack is filled up. Same with on the end right there. And on that note, check the other sides and underneath here. There we go. Yeah, just to make sure every little piece is filled in so it looks nice. There we go. I think we're good. And I'm just going to that little bit there with the toothpick. That looks good. All right. So now we have it all clamped up and now we just wait for it to dry. So it'll be about 24 hours for this.